Plastic is cheap to produce and can be made durable, but those conveniences come with a cost. Along the coasts all over the world, plastic waste from everyday products and packaging is washing up on shore. We now know that plastic ends up in the food supply. Cleaning the beaches and recycling helps, but styrofoam is not easily recycled and often ends up burned. One entrepreneur has found a way to break down styrofoam to its base materials so it can be reused. But Greenpeace says the best way to curb plastic waste is to limit its production in the first place. Our Sunday special report. It's 7 in the morning, and here at Jilong's Chaojing Park, volunteers old and young have gathered to clean up the beach. Each equipped with a pair of tongs, volunteers immerse themselves in the task at hand. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, the landscape is covered in garbage. But it's not just Jilong that's plagued with trash. Along the coast nationwide, a similar situation can be seen. According to data collected by civic groups last year, along every kilometer of Taiwan's coastline, there is an average of 10,142 liters of garbage, twice that of neighboring countries. Nationwide, there are approximately 646 tons of garbage along the coast. 我们发现有两大块的塑胶垃圾 We discovered two large sources of plastic waste One was materials discarded by the fisheries industry For example, buoys, nets, rope and polystyrene The other was stuff like what you would find in crowded cities That type of lifestyle waste is a major source of plastic garbage other data compiled in 2014 shows that plastic fragments account for most plastic waste in the ocean. The second largest source of plastic in the sea is styrofoam. This data was corroborated by what volunteers found while cleaning the beach. They collected a lot including styrofoam, plastic bags and so on. Accounting for most of it, there were lots of PET bottles and bottles from plastics. After the one-hour beach cleaning exercise was over, volunteers separated the garbage based on type, doing their best to separate recyclables. A lot of this waste that floated here on the sea can actually be put through the recycling system. These days in Taiwan, PET bottles are considered a valuable recyclable item. However, other recyclable can be problematic. For example, if they are too dirty, if their constituent materials cannot be determined, or if there are things growing on them. Those materials present significant problems when being recycled. When it comes to marine waste, styrofoam in particular is a predicament for the recycling system. Styrofoam is a product made from polystyrene. It's come to be used in many everyday products, such as disposable cups, fresh food packaging, shock absorption materials, and as a building material, and it is often used in aquaculture. Styrofoam is a polystyrene-derived plastic. Basically, it is what we call a PS, which means that polystyrene is its main constituent material. With polystyrene, we use a blowing agent such as butane, ethane, or carbon dioxide, which causes it to expand. Styrofoam has an extremely low recycling rate. Styrofoam is recycled at a rate of 6% worldwide, which is the lowest of all plastics. This is because its main material is light, and it becomes dirty very easily. Two main factors keep the rate of styrofoam recycling low, the first of which is the fact that it so easily breaks apart into smaller pieces. Civic groups cleaning beaches have discovered that the small pieces of styrofoam that litter the coastline are not only hard to clean up, they also present a danger to the human body. 
到一个法律人的杯子，他可能受益这千万千万片的这个小细小的微粒。One styrofoam cup may get broken into millions of tiny particles. When these particles are floating on the water, many fish may mistake them for food, such as fish eggs, and they swallow them. Through the food chain, with large fish eating smaller fish and smaller fish eating small shrimp, we humans will end up eating those particles. The second hurdle for recycling styrofoam is that its surface tends to get dirty, which affects the quality of the material produced when it's recycled. Therefore, most recycling factories won't accept marine waste styrofoam. So where does that styrofoam end up? Since they find it to be too greasy and difficult to process, and since there aren't many people who like to deal with it, those who receive marine waste styrofoam for recycling usually end up burning it. But now there are people who compete to collect the styrofoam waste that nobody else wants. We mostly use fish, and processing, in processing. 电动法没办法回收的这些保证那个微微组织。高月清 is the manager of a styrofoam recycling plant and is also the only person in Taiwan to turn styrofoam recycling into a successful business model. Inside his plant, styrofoam is piled two floors high. Look closely, and you can see shells stuck to the styrofoam, which was all collected from the coast. After the styrofoam comes into the factory, the shells must first be scraped off its surface. After that, the styrofoam is thrown into a solvent to turn it into liquid form. What's interesting is that this solvent will only dissolve styrofoam. After the solution settles, impurities will sink to the bottom or float on the surface. After which, the solution gets put through a second filtration process. This is the second filtration. This is a secondary filter. It uses an even finer filter to take out the smaller impurities. After the styrofoam solution is filtered, Gao uses his own distillation machine to reclaim the solvent and to separate it from the dissolved styrofoam, removing the sticky maltose syrup-like polystyrene. This is the main thing. The special quality of polystyrene is that it's more brittle. The more brittle, the better. This may look like a simple process, but it has taken Gao five years to feel things out. Gao is a Korea-born Taiwanese, and it was on the advice of a friend that he decided to come to Taiwan and invest in this industry. However, it was only after dipping his toes in the water that he learned how deep the water is. Not knowing makes one braver. Had I known it would require such hard work, I wouldn't have gotten into it. With regard to how the solvent is recovered, most people with a chemistry background would understand the principle. The biggest problem not yet overcome is the cost. Aside from the factory lease and the cost of solvents, the greatest expense comes from transporting recovered styrofoam. Styrofoam is an expanded plastic comprising 95% air and 5% material. We are transporting air. Transportation is a significant expense. For example, if you have a small truck that carries 40 kilograms, it can be packed full up to 40 kilograms. If one kilogram of transported product can be sold for 15 NT, that means a truckload is worth 600 NT. Recycled polystyrene is worth 14 NT per kilogram. But transporting a light material like styrofoam still costs several thousand or even tens of thousands of new Taiwan dollars. Given that, balancing the books is no easy feat. Three years after starting his business, Gao found himself unable to go on. Seeing his predicament, a domestic computer parts company decided to help pay transport costs, as well as 40 NT per kilogram to cover processing fees. From the perspective of the government and the Environmental Protection Administration, there just aren't any funds in the budget to pay for transporting the styrofoam. The help he received only solved the issue temporarily, so Gao entered into another cooperative agreement. The solvent would be transported in a container to an outlying island, where volunteers cleaning the beach would dissolve styrofoam on the spot, and the dissolved material would be sent to the factory for processing. This helped reduce transport costs. Additionally, the small fragments of styrofoam found on the beach could then be recycled and put to use. We 
我们呃的产品里面，其中有两项啊，在全球的占有率很蛮高的。Among our products, there are two that have been adopted at a high rate globally. One is our computer mice. The other is our keyboards. Plastics recycled from styrofoam can actually be used in a certain proportion in the components of our mice and keyboards. This factory annually produces 80 million mice and keyboards that are shipped around the world. Making these products requires more than 10,000 tons of plastic material. Polystyrene from recycled styrofoam is suitable for their needs. The polystyrene is too fragile, but after processing to improve its quality and make it more durable, it can be used to make keyboards, mice, and even packaging material. With regard to recycled materials, especially this recycled polystyrene, in mechanical strength tests, it's been shown to be completely the same as new material. The price is even similar. In recent years, more and more people have gotten involved with beach cleanups. Both industry and government players have invested resources with the hope of solving the problem of marine waste, but they can barely keep up with the pace of garbage production. In the end, cleanup means something like recycling or putting restrictions in place to try to bring about a reduction, cutting off garbage at the source to reduce production as much as possible. From the perspective of the average person, getting involved in environmental cleanup by reducing garbage production is comparatively easy. It's something everyone can do together. At the Executive UN, it has to be seen as an important issue. There must be a cross-departmental platform. The best approach would be to have a government committee that takes the lead on the issue, because this isn't an issue that concerns only one department. For example, manufacturing and raw materials concerns the Industrial Development Bureau, while product inspection is the concern of the Ministry of Economic Affairs. It wasn't long ago that the beaches of Taiwan were covered in garbage, the fine grains of sand replaced with tiny particles of styrofoam. If the Portuguese had seen such a sight 500 years ago, would they still have described Taiwan as Ilha Formosa?